to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. Secret pink code, pink code, Science can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Science can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. Secret pink code. My friend, are you sure that the risk is justified? By my calculations, the fuel simply won't be enough for the return journey. There's no risk. My new experimental engine uses less and flies much further. But why reinvent the wheel? After all, we can glimpse into the future and find out what kind of engines will be popular. Why overthink it when we can just look at what other clever folks have thunk up? This isn't a toy. I don't want to live always looking back at the future. Even if I make a mistake, it's still my own experience. And did you think about us? Yeah, yeah. I think about how surprised you will be when my experiment ends in complete success. Auf Wiedersehen. Attention. Prepare for a crash landing on an unknown planet. Why crash landing? Fuel level is zero. Computer, analysis of planet's surface. Air is not suitable for breathing. The planet is completely void of life. W we need to get out of here. Fuel level is zero. My mistake, my responsibility to fix. So, what do we know about engines? The principle of space movement is very simple. We burn fuel and receive fire. Fire flies out in one direction and pushes the rocket in the other direction. This process is called jet thrust. To travel far, you need to burn a lot of fuel. But the fuel level is zero. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Therefore, we need to think up a way to replace it. I'm an inventor. <laughs> I'll think something up. Hallucination. Computer, analysis of the planet's surface. The atmospheric composition is identical to that of the Earth. Air is suitable for breathing. The planet's surface is covered with grass. Do you see what I'm seeing? I don't see. I analyze. You're hallucinating as well? Computers don't have hallucinations. Yeah, yeah, there are only glitches.
It really is grass. We're just missing flowers. And butterflies. Oh. Ah! Computer! What is happening? Obviously, the planet has the ability to materialize images generated by cognitive activity. That's impossible! My thoughts are making grass and butterflies? You could say that. This is not a daisy. This is a tulip. <laughs> this is not a tulip. It's a suitcase. <laughs> the sky is green. <laughs> there, red mountains. Higher. Yeah. <laughs> I can create my own world. The world of Pin. Pin Almighty. Whatever you think up is yours. <laughs> I'm like an artist. Paint, paint and create. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm omnipotent. A can of fish. Open. <sighs> I need to refuel a little bit. Refuel? A barrel of rocket fuel. <laughs> Goodbye, you funny planet! Hello, computer. Can you tell me why we've stopped? Fuel level is zero. What do you mean, zero? We have a full tank! Obviously, the materialized objects must be located near the planet. I... I already figured that out. Hey there, my friends. How are you doing there? Hey, Ben. Hiya. Ah! Crash? Chico? <laughs> you know, generally speaking, I don't like... Uh, I'm but getting home? With everyone. All this time, I was at home. It was a dream? Wanna play some football now that you're up? Hey, <laughs> football. <laughs> Look at that! It's like Billy, join your team! Hey, hoop, 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 Pass, pass the ball, I said, you stubborn mule. Ole, ole, ole! Charge, let's go! Come on, guys, let's go! Hey! Help! Out! Aha! There you are! Oh my god! Ben! Did you get stuck or something? The ball's in play! Nine! This is not a dream. What are you talking about? No, well, I'm definitely not a dream. I don't know about Chico. He's always that sleepy. Yeah, yeah. You are not a dream. I just think about all of you. And this kind planet materializes you from my thoughts, from my memory. <laughs> You mean to tell me that Chico and I just crawled out of your head? Hee <laughs> hee! You couldn't even fit a ball in there! Not to mention Barry! <laughs> hey, what I do? But it's true. You're all here and here. <laughs> You're too much! You kill me! You're such a comedian! I want to go home. What is he even talking about? Is this pin ours? We need to get out of here. Fuel level is zero. <clears throat> it means we need an engine without fuel. <laughs> 
Such engines don't exist. Uh, we'll have to ask the future. My inquiry, an engine which works without fuel. Why didn't I think of it earlier? In order to fly in space, you don't have to use fire and burn lots of fuel. After all, in space is zero gravity, which means even the tiniest thing could move an entire rocket. You just need a lot of those tiny things. That tiny thing could be, for example, an eon. An ion is an atom without one or many electrons. We can get a lot of lot of ions from the atoms of inert gases. We take the gas, mix it into a big tube, and shoot a lot of electrons at it. When the electrons hit the gas atoms, we get eons. Eons will fly in an accelerator and reach up to 50 kilometers per second. Eons fly in one direction and can propel the rocket in the other direction. This kind of engine is called an Eon engine. But where will we find so much suitable gas? No, that's not a problem. And an ionic engine will work quite well with, for example, argon. There's lots of that in volcanic lava. Alles gemacht! <laughs> now I just need to check it. The device is ready for flight. Danke schon, my friend. My friends, it's time for me to come back home. So, when you fly away, all this will disappear? And we'll disappear too? You won't disappear. Think about each other, and you won't disappear. Think about each other, and you won't disappear. Chico, have you already started thinking about me? Taco's birthday full of mirth day. Our friend is so smart and kind. Eat some food, cakes and chips. Smart is smooth on <laughs> What a wonderful chip. surprise! Taco's Just day, for me, Taco's a customized day. song. Let's I love it. It's not only clever, way. it's thrifty as well. Come on. I know the song's awesome, but you can't possibly think that's the only thing we got you for your birthday. <laughs> you recall how your encyclopedia is missing a few pages? On D, right near the end, when I couldn't find dubstep. <laughs> oh, yeah. So weird they're gone. Don't know where they could have gone to. Daco, encyclopedias are a wonderful resource. And that's why they should have every last page. Therefore, we got you a new encyclopedia. Here! I hope the story's interesting. I've... Never read it. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Now that he has the one with all the pages, I can learn what dubstep is, I think. Well, let's find it. But, but not so fast. Um, maybe we could start from the beginning, or with ease, or... We have Damon, and Darwin, and... <gasps> Daco? Holy 70s haircut, Daco! Why is your picture in here? <gasps> Are you secretly famous? So humble. You never told us. I'm sure it's not me. You know my name is quite common. Come on, Daco. That's you for sure. Let's see what it says. Daco Moose was expelled from the Elk Institute of Scientific Research for his complete failure of a scientific study. His suggestions were so ludicrous that he was immediately kicked off of all research projects, as well as barred from participating in the Cowbell Prize Committee. Oh, dear. Oh, he's also a verb! It means to, um, do something extremely dumb. Mm. Oh. Yes, I'm the dishonored Daco. I'll explain. That's why you couldn't find the original page. It all started years ago at the Academy. 
It was the year's biggest meeting of important scholars and scientists. I wanted to leave my hoof mark in the history books. I had been working for weeks on what I thought was an exciting hypothesis, and I couldn't wait to share it with everyone. Ahem, ladies and gentle elk, I'd like to speak today on the subject of reactive gases properties and what we now know. Not so fast, it's not gross. I mean the good gases like oxygen. Oh. Oh. But they aren't all good, of course. Some can be downright dangerous, like some types of chloride can be. Hydrogen sulfide is a different matter. Ammonia, not poisonous, just smelly. Oh. Gross! <laughs> but wait! I haven't even gotten to the really bad ones. We get it. Can you get to your point? I'm pretty sure we all know how gases work. Right, right. Moving on. The reason I'm here today is to talk about my discovery. I've discovered some gases that have no reaction at all. None whatsoever. <laughs> I know it's strange, but they really do exist. These gases have no smell or color, so it was hard to find out they existed, and their atoms don't connect with other atoms in any way. They act as if they're high class, which is why I've decided to call them noble gases. <laughs> what a stupid name that is for a stupid substance. More like boring gas. Uh, boring is a matter of opinion, I think. But these, these are amazing! And I've discovered a total of six noble gases so far. They are helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. You might be wondering why don't these gases have any reactions? It's because of the actions of their atoms, and specifically, their electrons. Electrons orbit a nucleus. If other atoms come along, they can form a molecule with the first atom. Then they share electrons. The electrons start sharing their orbits, and thus the connection is made. A regular gas has space between its electrons, meaning it's free game for another atom to come and react. But a noble gas doesn't have any extra room. As a result, they make terrible roommates, and no one else can ever make a connection with them. No reactions can happen. This type of gas, these noble gases, are extremely rare in our own atmosphere. When I was searching for them, in fact, I found that they make up less than 1% of our own atmosphere on Earth. So tell me, young scientist, <laughs> if these gases are so noble and don't react to anything, do they even have a purpose? Any practical use here? Why should any of us care about them? Well, I really didn't think they needed one. I just thought they were a cool discovery. <laughs> pointless! <laughs> nobly pointless! <laughs> it's just like this nobly pointless speech! <laughs> <laughs> if we do research, uh, maybe we could find, I mean, uh, a point for the noble gas. I had always wanted to be a famous scientist, but not a laughing stock. And as you can see, I got my encyclopedia page, but it's my biggest shame. <laughs> oh. So you still don't know how they can be used? These noble gases? Surely you found some use. The most common noble gas is helium, and everyone knows how that's used for birthdays, balloons, and such. My hypothesis was called the most useless discovery of all time, and I was shamed ever since. I'm a failure. You're the farthest thing from a failure I know. Sure, you pull a Darko here and there. I, I mean, uh, we know how brilliant you are. He's right, Darko. What do they know anyway? Thanks, you guys. And they sound like a bunch of boring old mooses. Because who doesn't like balloons? Yeah, balloons are my favorite. Listen, that's just a bunch of hooey in that article. <laughs> Here's what I'll do. I'll make that encyclopedia encyclopedia. I'll show you a thing or two. I'll tear you apart. Science meanies. A 
of the bad birthdays I've had, this is probably second. I'd hate to hear first. Here's the thing. We sustained some serious damage to the engine. Also, comm system fried. And that means that we can't even call for help. We're finished. <sighs> At least it's quiet on, uh, what planet are we on? On Mars. I can tell from its moons, Phobos and Deimos. And that way is Earth. We could even see it if we had a big enough telescope. You know where they have telescopes? On Earth, where they can see us? Hey, people of Earth, check this out! There's a rabbit on Mars! You better come save him! I bet there's a big cowbell prize in store for whoever discovers these dummies on Mars! Uh they couldn't see us. No matter how much we try, they just don't have the technology to see this far. But what if we made a big bonfire or something like that instead? A fire needs oxygen to burn, and Mars has none. It wouldn't burn. Then how about a big light bulb? An enormous, shiny light bulb! Of course! We can stop by the giant hardware store on Mars. I heard they're having a sale on giant light bulbs. Perfect! Um, there is a chance we could make a sort of gas lamp. Could be simple. No air needed. Here's how those work. A glass tube is filled with a regular old gas like nitrogen or carbon dioxide. Then we can put a current through it. Electrons inside start to go crazy flying through the gas, and they start running into some of the other atoms. This makes the gas glow. You've got it! <laughs> that type of light bulb would be much easier to put together, and it would probably consume a lot less energy. What are we waiting for? Problem is, this bulb would be fragile and break way too easily. Gases of that variety are quite unstable. If they produce the wrong kind of compound, the lamp would soon be destroyed. <laughs> Fine! We just need a gas that is the opposite of volatile and doesn't react at all. Sounds like an emotionally well-adjusted gas. Or a sleepy one. You know, guys, I think I've heard of that gas. Discovered by someone smart. Oh, yeah! I do remember hearing something about that stuff. And I think it was a really good scientist. I'm so confused. You all might be onto something here. We might have a use for the noble gases. Phenomenal. Each gas burns a different color. Simply amazing. This is a brilliant use of gases in a new application. Not even hot. And I bet it burns even longer than an incandescent bulb because the gases inside aren't reactive to anything. And this saves us a trip to the giant bulb store, so we should put it outside now. Or we could use it to write words, like send out chips. That's a good plan, but I have an even better idea. Oh my. We have a possible situation. You should come see this. There's something truly bizarre happening on the surface of Mars. It's unbelievable. Remarkable stuff. Mm. Inconceivable. Or oh, phenomenal. Uh, what's that? Holy carrots! They found us! It looks like this is a new page in the encyclopedia that now deserves to be written. Daco may have brought noble gases to Mars, but on our planet, their discovery goes way back. It's credited to two noble scientists themselves. Lord Rayleigh and Sir William Ramsey won the Cowbell, uh, sorry, Nobel Prize in 1904 in chemistry. Thanks, noble dudes. Get back to your lounging. Ha <laughs> <laughs> 
flows differently for him. He could observe one process on Saturn for weeks on end. BB gets so lost in his work, my BB. <sighs> what if something bad has happened to him? Well, he'd write if something had, wouldn't he? Of course he would. There's no need to check in if everything's fine. I guess you're right. Hmm? There, Daddy. <gasps> it's from Bibi. So far, things are fine for me here. <laughs> Told you so. Hugs and kisses from Bibi. Okay, what else? Let me see. <sighs> That's it. Well, uh, at least you know that he's all right. Uh, that's good. That's great. <sighs> I can't take this anymore. I have to see my little man! <sighs> we could fly to BB on a rocket, huh? <laughs> rocket travel takes too long. And it's dangerous. I need a device that would let me see my BB all the way from here. Um, a telescope? Nine. Telescope won't do it. BB is way too far. I need to make a device which will allow me to transfer images over a tremendous distance. Then I can see my sweet BB <laughs> waving at me. Isn't he in outer space? How could he send you a picture? I don't want just a picture. What I'm talking about are high quality moving images. Movies, you know. Huh? To me, that sounds kind of like magic. Hmm. <gasps> Not magic. Vladimir Kozmich Svorykin was the first to successfully construct a device which was able to send and receive video images. This happened in the year 1931. At that point in time, the inventor was 42 years old. Today, descendants of that device can be found in almost every home, and the word television is known to even the smallest children. I still don't get it. How on earth can an image be transferred to some other place? Very simple. First, you have to split it up into smaller pieces, then pack them all up and send them out. Sounds like magic. When we watch a movie, we are actually seeing many separate still pictures one after another. The image on the screen is made of these frames. 
The quick changing of frames creates one long moving picture. That is why a video has to be broken into many separate frames before it can be sent somewhere. Moreover, each picture frame has to be broken into smaller parts as well. An image is made of millions of individual dots. These dots are so tiny that we can't even see them. If we transfer information about each dot to another place and recombine the dots in the new place, we can end up with a moving image. I did not understand a bit of that, but I think that's fine. But how can we reassemble all of the dots back into the image? We need something that is able to draw all of the dots incredibly quickly. Eureka! An image can be drawn by a beam of light. Then it will move right along the screen. If the light beam moves fast enough, then we will get frames. A TV screen is made up of separate dots that can translate any image which is sent to it. These dots are called pixels. Based on the information received, the TV lights up the appropriate pixels and we see the picture. <laughs> it's working! Hey, why am I black and white? I'm blue, right? Well, the model hairs Vorikin constructed only worked in black and white. There are too many other colors. It would need too many different colored light beams. It's just really hard. I remember reading there are a few what they call primary colors. Uh, three. And every other color is actually made from them. Oh, that's right! How could I forget? Yes! Indeed, there are three primary colors. They are red and blue and green. We only need three colors to create every color that we know. These primary colors are red, green, and blue. If we project the right kind of light beams on a white background, the white can become any other color. When red and green lights overlap, we see yellow. When green and blue lights overlap, we see aquamarine. And when red and blue overlap, we see magenta. When all three colored lights overlap, we see white. I will soon be able to see my little one in color. I was right, I'm blue, look. Good. Now we just have to get the camera up to baby. <laughs> I'm hungry. When BB sends the radio signal with the video image, it will be received by this antenna, then passed onto the television. And the TV will convert the signal into a pretty picture. If we make an electron move from one side to the other, it produces waves, like a float on the surface of a pond. These are called electromagnetic waves. Light consists of electromagnetic waves as well. These waves can spread everywhere, even in the space between planets and stars. By monitoring electromagnetic waves, we can see and hear what is happening very far away from us. When electrons move in a transmitting antenna, they produce waves, which scatter in all directions. Receiving antenna capture those waves, which then make electrons inside the receiving device move as well. Thus we can send and receive sound or images over great distance. 
Wow, it's snowing really hard in space. That's just the white noise. The signal hasn't arrived yet. Hooray! It's working! Just look, hooray! Uh, it's better uh, than magic yes. because it's real! Baby, <laughs> it's my baby! There he is! <laughs> Danke, Herr Zvoriken! Thank you, brave pioneer! <laughs> hey there, Pin! We came to visit our new best friend, your television! Well, guten tag! I've been giving the television system a teensy gigantic upgrade! Meet your even newer best friend! Huh? <laughs> but that's... Baby! And that's the future of television! And in the new year, we'll have more adventures, more discoveries, more explorations of the unknown, more My pizza. friend, can you stick to why we're here? This tree's heavier than it looks. Get to the point. Skip to the end. Yeah, all right. And so, new adventures call for a new noble furzy vessel presenting... Ta-da! <gasps> Behold! Spaceship Mark II. She is five times faster and ten times stronger than the previous version. Is she not wunderbar? Awesome! It's just beautiful! Penguin genius time! But what are those five times faster, ten times stronger claims based on? Don't worry your horned head about that. I just figured out the secret of the universe. And what is the secret? Come on, Pin, spill it! Well, it's quite simple. The secret is symmetry! Right on! I knew it the whole time! Um, what symmetry? Just imagine a forest that reflects in the river. Or a butterfly. Or look at your hands! I get it! Symmetry is when one half of a thing looks like the other half of it. Like a mirror! Not exactly. Symmetry can be different, not just reflective. For example, if we take this snowflake and return it, it will look exactly the same. And this type of symmetry is called radial or rotational symmetry. Symmetry appears throughout the natural world, in the biological world of plants, animals and insects, in mineral and chemical worlds, in weather. Symmetry is all around us. In fact, symmetry permeates the entire known universe. Einstein elevated symmetry to be the primary feature of nature that constrains allowable dynamic laws. Universal symmetry can mean that all points in space are relative, and all directions in space are relative. Therefore, the laws of physics apply at any point in space. The beauty of the universe is inherent to its symmetry. I have made this new ship absolutely symmetrical, all the way down to the smallest part, giving it improved aerodynamics and a far better resistance coefficient. Yeah, yeah, enough talk. Let's take this baby for a spin. Where's the door? <sighs> there is one incy wincy issue. This grand new ship is pure perfection. It's unrivaled in its symmetry. So any dissymmetry at all would just throw everything right the heck off. Which is why a vessel of such perfection requires an equally perfect pilot. If the pilot was even an itsy bitsy bit asymmetrical, then what? There will be a big asymmetrical bang! <laughs> Pin, my friend, are you saying you're not the perfect pilot? Nine, to my shame, I'm asymmetrical. Hey, not a problem. One of us has got to be a perfect pilot. Nine, nine, nine. I never noticed it before. But every one of us is far from perfection. And now, it's all that's on my mind when I look at myself. Life doesn't like strict boundaries. Your symmetry and geometry and stuff. At the end of the day, nobody's flawless. But so what? New adventures still await. And a new year approaches. Now, is that not beautiful, my dear Pin? 
Doesn't it lift your spirits up? And it's completely <laughs> symmetry free. It's totally, maybe, bringing <laughs> clear and mostly sunny weather to our region. The area's average now temperature is minus 20. That is perfection. Flawless, that symmetrical perfection. <laughs> She's the horse of a perfect color. <laughs> oh. Behold, perfection itself. I am perfection itself. Yep. Tomorrow the entire universe will open its doors to us. I'm just so excited. I could just kick up my heel gears. Uh, all right. Run around for a little bit then, and I will rest a little bit. And rest is what? Um, well, it's, um, 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 it's kind of like recharging my batteries. I tell you, this will absolutely work. If we can't fly on this perfect ship, we need to make it a little less perfect then. I'm not entirely sure Pin would approve of this idea. Are you kidding me? He'll thank us. Hmm. What the cotton tail do we have here? Ikagosha 2.0. I am perfection itself. The ideal robotic pilot for this perfect symmetrical vessel. So are you planning to fly alone? Fly alone. <laughs> See how far I threw that? <laughs> That's like a new world record! It's not a record. Considering the weight of the object and factoring in air resistance, it could be thrown a great deal further. What? All right, why don't you have a go? What would be the point of such an experiment? Um, well, there's not really a point. It's just fun! But fun doesn't make any logical sense. <laughs> Listen to perfection itself. Just admit it. You can't do it. Yes. Proving the bunny wrong will be point enough. Oh! oh. <laughs> hmm. All right. But can you do this? What? <laughs> well? Well, where's this ideal pilot of yours? 
pin, we've all been waiting here in the snow for half an hour. It's New Year's Eve. I need to prepare to get my end-of-year freak on. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> uh, it's not in her programming to be late. All of your watches must just be running fast. What's up, gang? Let's <laughs> test play this baby. All systems are ready. What happened to you last night? <laughs> Discovered having fun and it's just awesome! Happy Day New Year! Everybody, Happy New Year! <laughs> what have you not had done? She can't pilot the ship like this! She's asymmetrical! There would be the Big Bang! Beginning ignition countdown! Five, four, nine! No, nine, three, two, one, start! <sighs> See, it's all good. There wasn't even a baby bang. <laughs> there might have been a bang after all. <laughs> Yo! Yo! Can you hear me? Really? Oh. You're really all right? You just went kabang! Yeah, it banged me all the way into the future. Seems like the universe may not be as symmetrical as thought. And now your perfect spaceship and your perfect pilot are in the year 3013. How can the universe not be symmetrical? There was a time when scientists believed in absolute symmetry and physical laws, but exceptions have been discovered. One of these is the element cobalt. The laws of symmetry say that when an atom disintegrates, the atom's nucleus should radiate electrons in all directions. But the nuclei of cobalt break this rule. That's because they're magnetic, and so they only radiate electrons from their positively charged poles. Unfortunately, this universal asymmetrical law applies to the principles of time travel as well. So I cannot return to your time. Well, you'll be terribly missed. Still, you're safe, and that's what really matters. Safe and very happy. Happy thousand years in the past New Year's. <laughs> Yes. Thanks, my friend. <laughs> Happy thousand years in the future, New Year! Happy New Year! <laughs> Happy New Year! The theory of the absolute symmetry of universal law was demolished by two American scientists, Zhang Dao Li and Chen Ning Yang. Their discovery of the infraction of the laws of symmetry in nuclear reactions was honored with the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1957. What good stars, bright and beautiful, interesting. But am I good or bad? The question, I believe, is rhetorical. Nein! It's a very serious question. I never do any bad things. And why? Because I was raised that way. Or maybe something's holding me back inside. Your conscience, maybe. And who is it, this conscience? How does he determine what's good and what's not so good? We're not going to get through this without an espresso machine. Oh, forget your silly machine. I really need to resolve this. <sighs> My friend, is there really any need to get upset? You've had integrity since the day you were born. It's us, ordinary mortals who are forced to struggle between right and wrong. Light, dark, good and evil. So many riddles. Oh, Spheroscope, tell me about the nature of light and darkness. Light is a type of energy which we can see. Our eye sees a spectrum from red to violet. Therefore, our picture of the world depends on the substance's physical properties and its relation to the light and the optical spectrum. If we were able to see ultraviolet rays, then glass would not seem transparent to us. After all, ultraviolet rays cannot penetrate glass, and the world would look completely awkward in infrared light. So what is this light made of, then? It's not possible to categorically answer that question. On the one hand, light can be considered to be an electromagnetic wave. On the other hand, light is a stream of particles. These particles are called photons, and they have their own energy and zero mass. Compression! Uh, right. Uh -huh. Oh my god. Mm. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> so how's the research uh, coming along into good and evil? Uh, you what? Oh, that! Ah, that can wait. I learned so many interesting things about this light. There you go. Seems we did okay without the espresso machine. This needs to be implemented immediately. <laughs> Ein, zwei, ankles away! <gasps> Compression! Ha <laughs> ha I must tell everyone about this! <laughs> And now we have the cleanest in the entire universe, Lollipop. Holy carrots! My friend, mm. I've performed an incredible experiment! 96% mm. pure Lollipop! Mm. Hey, Invisible Pin is much more interesting! Ear twistingly good! <laughs> Now I'll show you something that's truly ear-twisting. There we go. Now let's... <laughs> Uh-oh! Are Lollipop's capable of doing that? <laughs> My sweet tooth friend, how could you be so careless in your handling and preparation of these compounds and mixtures? And why are you blaming me? Well, it wasn't me. Ah. 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 <laughs> oh, well, I never... <laughs> was very entertaining. Here's someone who'll appreciate my invention. Rosa, it's me, Pin, just a little invisible. Look at the glass, it's flying all by itself. Wow, cool, a flying glass. No, Rosa, I didn't mean to. Have you gone mad? No, it wasn't me. Who then? Was it me? Stop, that wasn't funny at all. <laughs> what a nice hobby. I think for now, I, think I won't tell anyone about is. my invisibility hat. It's so much fun. <laughs> You think it was me or something? What do you need? Huh? I need a pair of really strong handcuffs, or maybe a cage. Yeah, a cage would be better, I think. You know, to be absolutely sure. You know? Huh? <laughs> what for? You see, I've been doing all sorts of bad things around here lately. The thing that bugs me about it is I don't even remember doing them. Like, not long ago, I apparently put glue in Daco's shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's always a really funny one to do. Well, no, <laughs> not really. And I even, not too long ago, placed a thumbtack on Rose's chair. <laughs> you want to say that that was also a bad trick? Oh, it was okay, I guess. What can you expect from a goof-off like me? Oh. If only I could remember what I've done. But maybe you... I'm sleepwalking? Or uh, maybe I even have multiple personalities? Huh? 
the mine caught. What is it that I've done? So huh? what? Do you think you can help? I think a cage with a lock is a great solution. We don't need any kind of cage. Everything will be fine. I promise it to you. Why was I good before? Because I didn't have an invisibility hat. It's easy being good when everyone can see you, and vice versa. I could refrain. Forgive me, please. My friend, it's quite touching to try to take all the blame, but to believe that you were responsible for all that is impossible. No, integrity was built into your genes, I think. <laughs> it appears that nine. And this story about an invisibility hat is, forgive me, simply unscientific. But it's true. I'll explain the principles of my work. We already know that our atoms consist of a nucleus and electron. But there's much more free space in an atom than anything else. If an atom was a giant, giant whale, then its nucleus would be the size of a pea in its stomach. And the electrons would be tiny grains of sand on its skin. When I learned how much free space there was inside an atom, I thought that through such an empty and hole-filled atom of photons would easily fly through and everything in the world would be transparent. But this just isn't true. And that's because when a photon goes through an atom, it has to take the electron and shift it from a lower energy level to a higher one. If the difference between levels is not great and the photon is strong, then it easily shifts the electron and is immediately absorbed. That's why light doesn't pass right through an atom. That's how atoms of any opaque subject work. So how does light pass through transparent objects? The atoms just have a far greater distance between their energy levels. The photons try to shift the electron to a higher level, but it can't. So it continues through until it's passed through all the atoms. And in liquids and organic bodies, it's even more complicated. In addition to the electrons orbiting around, the molecules themselves are vibrating, flying here and there, rotating and changing. Through that field, it's incredibly difficult for photons to go through. But I thought up a way to increase the difference in the energy levels of my atoms and reduce the molecule vibration so the photons wouldn't get absorbed and PIN became invisible. <sighs> invisible and very bad. Neat! Can I see this thing? I already destroyed oh, it. Oh, and I almost believed you. <laughs> okay, I'll prove that I can be bad. Right, I'll take that <gasps> and throw it at someone. And I will be laughing. No. And? I... I can't do it. Because you're all watching me. <laughs> that is exactly what we were proving. <laughs> Just what I needed. Proving pins good. <laughs> well, it seems huh? everything worked out all right. <laughs> oh, I can't even walk at all. <laughs> <sighs> now everyone can be completely safe. <laughs> Crash, how about you doing an act of some real goodness? <laughs> Oh, oh, come on. Uh, uh, uh. A moment of your attention. Oh, hey, <laughs> Pin, what's with you today? That was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, that's all me.